Hello and welcome to this introduction video tutorial for MindFusion Web Forms Scheduler Component. This is a basic video tutorial that covers how to add the control to a web project, choose a view and a theme, render the calendar in the browser, create appointments interactively, and create appointments and reminders in code. Let's start by creating an empty ASP.NET project. We'll name it Calendar. We add a new web form and leave the default name. In Design View, we'll add the calendar control. We assume you have installed the component and the control is in the toolbox. When we drop the calendar, the Tasks menu shows up. The first task is to choose the appropriate view. The Month Range view shows a range of months. The Week Range view, a row of weeks. Then we have the List view that lists days and the Timetable view, which renders a single day. Finally, the Resource view. In our sample, we'll use the week range view. Let's change the appearance. We have a set of predefined themes, standard, lila, and more. We chose the silver theme. Here is a calendar. We need a script manager to render it correctly in the browser. We drag one from the toolbox and drop it above the calendar. Here is a calendar. It is fully functional. If you click on a day, the predefined appointment form appears. We can create an event. Let's create an event that lasts several days. Just select them and then click. Here it is. Now let's create another appointment that spans over a day that is already busy. A glyph appears, notifying us of a collapsed event. If we click on the glyph, details of the hidden event emerge. Now let's look at our calendar. It starts from the 25th day of the month. We don't agree with that. Let's make it span one month from the first day of the month to the last one. In the properties grid, we find the date and end date fields. We set the date to the 1st of October. The end date is the last day of October. Note that we can change the week range so our month does not necessarily show four weeks. The view updates accordingly. Of course, we don't need that, so we leave the end date to the 31st of October. The week range view offers specific customization options, as do the other views. Let's change the count of weeks that are visible. Why not add some space between days? Now, let's switch to some basic programming. Let's create an appointment in code. We need an instance of the appointment class. The necessary namespace is not referenced. Let's add the reference. This is a one-day appointment, and its start and end date are the same. We choose October 15th. The header text gives information about the appointment. In description text, we put the details about the appointment. We add the appointment to the items of the calendar. Finally, let's add a reminder. It is an instance of the reminder class. We specify the message of the reminder. It includes the header text of the appointment.
Now let's set the time interval. We choose one hour. We choose between two types of reminders. The exact type triggers the reminder at the specified time. The leading reminder triggers it at the specified interval before the appointment is due. Let's assign the reminder to the appointment. We run the application. Here it is, our reminder is visible on October 15th and a small bell signifies it has a reminder attached to it. These are the basic steps to create and configure a calendar with MindFusion Scheduler for ASP.NET. Find out more about MindFusion Scheduler for ASP.NET at mindfusion.eu slash webplanner.html. Thank you for watching.